Um, but I was painted the vision by a good friend's father around what this industry could do. And, um, and I never looked back, but I kind of lie because my first five years, I really, really struggled. I went from failure to failure, but with huge enthusiasm because I guess my vision was always greater than my largest challenge. And that's something I'd love you to write down today. It's really important that you are so clear on, on that vision that you have. And I'll tell you why, because there was about three or four times in those first five years where it just wasn't working. And I had my mentor at the time um, really just keep me on track. He was the accountability partner. He was the buddy that really I needed in my corner because on the days I wanted to quit, he reminded me uh, firstly to not quit on a bad day and to second, re really remember to never allow your greatest challenge to derail your dreams. Just never allow your challenges to be greater than your vision. And that's really, really important because I had times where I'd have 200 seats in a room booked for presentations and no one would show up. I had times where I would knock on doors for you know, weeks at a time and no one would be interested in what I had to sell. But the key was that um, I really bought into the reason I was you know, involved. And that was that one day I wanted to be a stay-at-home dad. One day I wanted to be this, this father that could be there with my kids and to give them the life that I truly envisage for them. And I had that vision from very early on. In fact, I remember when I was about 12 years old, I used to watch my father go to work and he used to work massively hard. And he took our family from a, a struggling family to a, a pretty well off family just from working, you know, those massive hours in a corporate career, seven in the morning till seven at night. So back then I knew there was a better way. And I'm glad to say that this industry really painted the the, 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 the chance, the opportunity to be able to, uh, to jump on in on that. But look, I'm so glad I kept going for those first five years because my sixth year, I started to do exceptionally well, um, but no one really saw the story. No one saw the first five years. They saw that sixth year and they went, wow, you kind of got all of this overnight success. But the reality was most people will see the glory because they're not programmed to look for the story. They're looking for a way to inspire them um, and, and most of the time, that's the flash and the cash, unfortunately. That's the way we've been programmed ever since we were kids to look for all those, those sort of shiny objects. Now, the great thing about the industry in today's day and age is it's a lot less about that. It's much more about realness. It's much, much more about rawness. And you guys, um, as, a, as a community and as a culture, have really nailed this part. So you're really in the right shape and the right hands here. Fast track my career. I ended up traveling the world, living in 10 cities over about six years. And, um, and worked with teams of tens of thousands of people. But what I will say is that I hit a crisis point in 2011. And I'd like to share a little bit about that today because I, feel, I believe that um, crisis, in hindsight, this is all in hindsight, at the time it didn't feel like this, but crisis ignites evolution. You know, I was really struggling. I had a few business decisions I'd made that didn't go my way um, outside of this industry. And I also started to feel pretty depressed about it all. And you know, the doctors said I had anxiety and depression and all these kind of things. And to top it off, we then got told we might not be able to have kids, my, um, my partner Chantelle and I. And that was the dream to be the stay-at-home dad, right? Now, you have a choice when you get thrown with a crisis point to make a decision. And that is, do I take on the beliefs of others and the truths of others as the belief of, of, of my own? Or do I step into my own power and do I discover my own path? And that's what we decided to do. And so we reinvented ourselves. Um, and what we did is, is, is basically dived into elements that you guys know so well here from the biohacking movement, which is, you know, things like mindfulness um, through to eating better, through to, you know, really working on our relationships. And we identified that if we could raise the vibe across all facets of life, that we were going to give ourselves a really, really good chance of succeeding and sustaining that success. Because here's the thing, most people that I've worked with, and, and I say most, like 95% plus of people that I've worked with from a high performance perspective have gained the money but they've done it at the jeopardy of everything else, at the jeopardy of their, of their relationships, at the jeopardy of their health. And I don't believe that we need to be one of those people. I truly believe if, the, if you work on all facets of life and you understand that life will balance itself out eventually anyway, the, you know, the equilibrium of the world always does that, then ultimately we're gonna give ourselves the best possible chance, not only to help ourselves to succeed, but also to help many others as well. Now, we're in a really interesting time in the world, and I would say this is a crisis point. Now, there's a, it's a crisis point for a variety of reasons, but really for a lot of people, it's that we've been forced into working in a way that some of us haven't been comfortable with doing before. You know, obviously not being able to connect with people face-to-face -face, uh, as much as we've been doing. All of that can play a pretty big uh, role and, and, and impact negatively if we're not prepared for it. And I want to give you some tools today that are going to help you not only overcome that, but also increase your prod productivity in your business and at the same time, make the biggest impact. So if you're excited to do that and you want to learn about that, just drop the word excited in the comments. Or it's this way, I think, if, uh, if we're looking here on, um, on Zoom. 
And I would love to, to really understand you know, where you're at in your life as well. So perhaps you could also let me know, give me something to work with. What is maybe a challenge that you are currently facing, just in a word or a small sentence, personally? You know, what's something that you know that you need to overcome personally to step into your own greatness? And I love seeing how many of you are excited. This is fantastic, guys. So look, here's the thing. The, the, the final part of this story today is that as, as we changed everything in our lives and we stepped into further success with what we now do, which is really you know, helping people to master all areas of their lives. And I say we because this is myself, my partner Chantel, and our you know, beautiful family and our community as well. Uh, the one thing I will say is that we do now have a three-year-old son uh, who was conceived and born naturally as a result of all those changes that we were able to make. And so really anything's possible. And I'm so glad that we stepped into our own truth back when we decided to make that decision. And I really hope that you do today as well. You, you have the power to be able to really accomplish anything in your lives. In fact, you know, no human being has ever walked this planet and achieved their potential. There's the ability to always expand on that. And I believe it's expansive because, you know, we've really followed a set of conditioning up till now. You know, if you look at how you brush your teeth, for example, and if I ask you, what do you do when you put your toothpaste on? Do you put, actually drop this in the comments, do you put water on your toothpaste before you put your, your toothpaste on or after? Do you just put it first before or after? Just let me know how you brush your teeth. And the reason I'm going to ask you this question, okay, a lot of people are saying after, after, after. Now, the people that have answered, please let me know why you put water on your toothbrush in the first place. Um, some of you are before, most of you are after. There's a, there's a couple of people that have said neither, which is great as well. This is fantastic. It's really, really cool to see. Okay. Some people have said it's habits. Um, I just do it. Uh, I, it cleans the toothbrush before. Now, here's what happens. We've been brushing our teeth ever since we can remember. And most of the time when we're asked how we do it, a majority of people put water on their toothbrush. But when we ask why you put water on your toothbrush, most of us try to justify why we're doing something in a particular way. We will defend our belief until the cows come home. We'll say it makes it easier to brush. It'll allow us to get more you know, water in there so that it, that it can stick to the plaque, whatever the answer is. The key is we're justifying. The reason that we're, most of us are actually brushing our teeth with water is because we've been taught to do that from since we were a kid, right? That is subconscious programming 101. That is a habit that has been on autopilot ever since we could even talk, you know? And so the, the thing is, a lot of our habits have been put in play uh, exactly like that, whether that's society, that's in environment, whether that's the family that love us, whether it's been traditions that have been passed on. And so sometimes as we step into new phases of the world, those traditions and those different habits and things that we've been doing don't necessarily serve us in the current form. And it's okay, that's okay. Here's the thing, when you talk to a lot of dentists, they'll actually let us know well, or let's say you go to a dentist tomorrow, most of the time it'll be a dry brush. They believe that they, they can get more plaque off that way as well. I'm not a dentist. Everyone has their own opinion, but a majority of dentists I talk to also recommend doing it that way as well. So again, sometimes we justify why we're doing something, yet maybe the reality is that we could actually improve or enhance that approach by just simply changing a habit. Now, to change a habit, we've got to have awareness. And the first key to transformation in anything that we do, so if you want better results in your business, you want a better relationship, you want better health, it's 100% focusing on awareness. We've got to understand why we're doing something in the, in the first place. We've got, to, we've got to look at it, right? And once we have the awareness, then it's about acknowledgement. It's about acceptance. Feel free to write this down. I'm giving you a lot of A's. It's about awareness. It's about acknowledgement. It's about acceptance. Then it's about action. And then finally, it's about accountability to that action. So again, I'll start again. It's about awareness, acknowledging that, you know, that, that, that realization, if you'd like. It's about accepting it. And once we accept it, then it's about you know, action and taking action on either a new course or, or maybe even, even it's accepting that what you're doing is currently working, but then also being held accountable to that, the five A's. Now, the reason I'm sharing this model with you is because we identified that we needed to make some changes. And a lot of people I work with also identify that they need to make changes. The biggest question I'm getting at the moment in this current climate is, James, how do I make more money? And my answer is, when did you last detoxify your body? And people can't understand that because we've been programmed that we need to go and change some, something in the business. But the reality is, the cleaner your body is, and you guys get this from a biohacking perspective, the cleaner your body is, and the more you're focused on self, the more everything else is gonna walk its path. And, and you're gonna step into your own power here by simply being able to show up in a better version of yourself. So when you get on a plane and you get taken through the safety features and they say, hey, listen, if an oxygen mask drops, make sure you put it on you before you put it on anyone else. Well, that's what has to happen in life. But too often what we see is so many people focus on the business process, on taking action consistently, 
and not focusing on self until it's too late. And they burn themselves out. And, and my role right now in the world is really just to try to reverse, into, reverse that whole process and make sure that we focus on self first so that we can create that sustainable success. So I created a model called the expansion zone. I love you to write this down. Some of you have seen this before, but I think it's really important to identify how all of this works. So the first phase of the expansion zone, it's broken into three phases, by the way. The first phase is foundation. And you could almost put in brackets next to that self-care. And the second phase is then connection. And that's, we're, we're going to go into that, but that's, you know, your connection with self, your relationships, your tribe. And the third phase is optimization. You guys like that word a lot. So let's go back to phase one to start with. Now, I'm not going to have time today to go through 12 key areas under those, those three areas, because there's 12 sort of pillars, if you'd like, to this whole model. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some of the key things that you can apply immediately into your life. And then we're going to talk about some habits that you can start to implement as of today that are going to allow you to, again, to step into that power. So if you want better results in your business, in fact, if you want better results in your business, drop in the word results in the comments. Is it that way? I don't know if I'm on a mirror or if it's that way, but drop, drop the word results if you want some form of results, extra results, additional results to what you've currently got. And this is fantastic because you guys are driven. You can see it. So here's the thing. The expansion zone starts with detoxification. Now, detoxification is broken into three areas. Number one is elimination. Number two is then the cleansing. And number three is then the, the renewal, if you'd like. Um, and that's the, like nourishing and things like that. So we're going to break this down just a little bit, just so you're, you're clear on how this process can be so simple for you in the real world. So we've got to identify when it comes to detoxification that we can't eliminate and accumulate at the same time right? And we need to understand that when we're beings of, 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 of you know, the scroll at the moment, we're constantly on social media, we're constantly, you know, accumulating information, we're constantly always bringing new stuff in. If we don't take some time to remove and identify what's not serving us, then we can keep accumulating and it becomes a, it's like a glass, right? And the glass can get to the very top and just overflow. And then all of a sudden that's overwhelm in your life. Those, those kind of things happen very, very easily if we're not really aware of this whole conversation. So what are the things right now in your life that are not serving you? What are the things that you know that you could eliminate immediately and that would positively impact your life? Now, for example, it could be something in the environment you have. Let's say it was the home environment. Are you watching a lot of TV? I've got a TV. It's behind me. It's been plugged out of the socket. I'm in a little studio. It's been plugged out of the socket for three years. We haven't watched TV for three years. Why? Because that absolutely is a subconscious you know, program. It's, it basically pushes everything down from an energetic perspective. It, you know, if, you, if you want to vibrate at the highest level, you want to be playing love and above, you don't want to be playing in guilt and shame and worry. And a lot of media pushes you down into those sort of phases of, of you know, the, the, the vibrational frequency graphs. So what are you currently you know, aware of within your environment that you could eliminate? But let's also talk from a body perspective. What are you currently eating that you know doesn't serve you? You live in a world right now where there's so much packaged food everywhere. And the reality is if you're eating packaged food, just remember that you know, all the nutrient, nutritional value is gone within three days if it's, if it's you know, a packet of something like you know, bread and all these kind of things have got so many E colors and A colors, all these, all these colors, right? and all these preservatives and all these additives and all these kind of things that are going on at the moment um, that, again, don't serve us. And so it's important to identify what those things are. So I'm giving you an example today of a couple of different areas, but it's important that you can apply this to anything in your life. It could be your business. What, how could you detoxify your business right now? You start to look at what you can eliminate that is not serving you right, right now. And then what we need to do is look at cleansing. Now, from a cleansing perspective, I'm a big fan of fasting. I mean, I've been literally 10 day water fast every 90 days for years now. And I find this is one of the most amazing emotional, mental, spiritual, physical upgrades that you can possibly have. Intermittent fasting is great. If you can just fast till lunchtime and then you eat for those six hours or eight hours after, and then you fast again to the next day. But I'm talking, what else could you do to take that game to another level? And so you start to look at ways to be able to cleanse the body. You know, you're, you're accumulating food consistently. You know, it goes into the stomach, then goes into the small intestine. And the trouble is, in the small intestine, you've got those little villi that start to bring all of those nutrients into the body. But if you've got a lot of toxicity that's built up in that area, you start bringing toxicity into the body, and then the body's trying to dispel it, it's trying to get rid of it. And that doesn't serve us. So again, if we're clear on what is not serving us by stopping that, but then we find ways to be able to cleanse the body, then mentally we start to play a bigger game. And all the greatest business decisions I've ever made, some of the biggest contacts I've ever met have happened as a result of water fasts. 
So what's your form of detoxification? What are you doing to start to eliminate the things that are not serving you? And then the nourishing piece is then what are you currently doing to put into your body that's going to give you the high vibe lifestyle? So if you look at the blue zones, uh, those cultures that have lived some of the, you know, the longest in the world, and, and, and I know you guys have studied this, but you know, Dan Butner and the National Ge Geographic backing were able to start to look at these cent centenarians around the world. And one of the key things for the centenarians is that about 97 to 98% of their diets were high vibe fruits and vegetables. You know, again, any, any fruits and vegetables that are higher in water content, that are living, are only going to positively impact our lives. And so the question is, are we eating a lot of dead foods or a lot of living foods? I'm not here to say that you should be cutting out every single bit of dead food, but what I'm saying is that you wanna make sure that you're increasing your living foods. Because again, this is about energy. Once we bring our energy flow up, all of a sudden things start to flow much better as well. Um, and so if you look at some of the other components that lead in from that, then we start to sort of pivot a little bit to the movement piece. And again, if you wanna look at the blue zones, the blue zones are constantly moving, they're always moving, but they're not going to the gym, they're moving naturally. It's natural movement happening in their lives all the time. A lot of them are outdoors consistently. We know that we can reduce inflammation in the body from simply being barefoot outside. By simply being barefoot outside and moving at the same time, we start to increase our endorphins, our dopamine, even our serotonin, all of these happy hormones as a result of just putting ourselves into positions that we probably should have already been, been doing you know, in our lives. We're naturally designed to be outside and to be moving. So one of the key hacks that I personally work with is to move every 20 minutes. I'm currently standing up. I never do a meeting sitting down. I never sit down on a laptop just like this. I'm always standing up and giving energy because I'm getting energy. And by the way, we know that after 45 seconds of changing our posture, we can change our neurological pathways and we start to perform better. Now, here's the problem. If we are currently uh, working from home more and there's a lot of things going on and we find ourselves finally a little working space where we can try to focus, uh, the reality is if we're sitting down on that and then there's distractions around us, it's not going to serve us long term. So we're going to find these ways to hack the home environment right now so that we can increase our productivity and ultimately that, that would lead to results as well in all facets of your business. If this is making sense so far, please drop the word sense in the comments. It would be really, really awesome to hear um, if, if you, you are gaining some value from this as well. Fantastic. I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're all still together on this, which is great. If you start to then sort of pivot from the, the, the detox into the um, you know, the, the, the food component, which is obviously days at a time conversations we could be having on all of these kind of things. Then we start to look at the mindfulness piece. And we know that meditation is one of the most popular forms of mindfulness right now. I love meditation. I love sound healing. I love rebirthing breath work. I, I, I instruct as a, a rebirthing breath work instructor here. And, and, and although I don't get a lot of time to do that based on what I currently do professionally, I love seeing the transformation people can make so, so quickly as a result of focusing on going inwards in order so they can go back outwards. And here's the thing. We know that by practicing meditation for 10 minutes a day for eight weeks, that we can shrink our amygdala in our brain. And our amygdala being that control center, our fight or flight response control center is, is, is highly wired. And, and what I'm seeing so much at the moment, especially with us all in front of the, the, the computers, is this, and you, this, is, this is the piece that I really talk about a lot on social, you've probably seen this before. And that is that, do you know 86% of people right now start their day in reaction mode? And what I mean by that is they're reaching for the phone. And as they reach for the phone, that most people are still in bed, what happens is, firstly, we reach for the phone because of our dopamine. We are really addicted to anticipation and reward. So we pick the phone up anticipating something's gonna be on there, and hoping that we're going to get some form of reward as a result of looking. And then all of a sudden we see the little one next to the Facebook notification and we're like, yes, and we start to scroll. Now, what happens with all of this? And the issue that I have with all of this is that over 50% of people that are doing this, reaching for the phone first thing in the morning and doing it whilst their partner is lying next to them and they're doing it before they even say good morning to their spouse. The other thing that's happening, if you look from a neurological perspective, as we start to reach for the phone, there's a few things that happen. Our cortisol levels and our stress hormones all start to increase. They race. Again, there's that anticipation, right? Everything's starting to kick in. It's almost like there's a snake out on the ground and you're like, whoa, you know, the fight or flight starts to kick in. That can kick in very, very quickly with a, with a device. But here's the thing. We know that when we're in a fight or flight response mechanism, our brain, our logical part of the brain, the frontal lobe, it starts to shut down so that we don't need to put the energy there. We can put the energy on getting out of a situation that doesn't serve us. So now we're scrolling 
but we're starting to see the perpetual stress components start to kick in and it stays like that all day. So we react to what's on the phone. We get stressed by the email. We get stressed that we haven't responded to somebody. We haven't even got out of bed yet, guys. Then we get in the car and someone cuts us off. Now we're on the horn because now we're reaction based. And then once we get to an office or once we get to a meeting and something doesn't work in our favor, then what happens? We then react to that again. But this time we start to tell stories. We get into that space because we're not in that full 100% capacity logical thinking component. We start to create these automated stories that go on loop. Oh, John, you wouldn't believe what happened to me today. My boss told me that I wasn't doing well. Oh, you, I can't believe he did that, whatever the situation is. I went to a meeting today and I can't believe that that person didn't join. I thought they were going to. So this is what's happening constantly. Now, this leads then into your, the rest of your day your week, your months, and your years. And you wonder why people are you know, struggling from perpetual stress, chronic inflammation. I mean, it's literally just from that, never mind all the food, never mind the lack of sleep and all of these other things that happen. So if you wanna be a productive, high performer, if you wanna really take your business but your life to another level, my invitation to you is to not reach for your phone in the first two hours of the day, to go completely tech-free. Now this might sound like a, whoa, I can't do that kind of moment, but let's look at it from a practical perspective. In that time, instead of reaching for the phone, we're taking time to stretch and feel our body as we're waking up. We're like doing the whole animal stretch, right? You know, you watch a dog and a cat try to get up, they take forever to stretch. That's what we should be doing. It's fantastic to transfer energy throughout the body as we're stretching and as we get up, we sort of look around and we show gratitude for just being alive. And as a result of showing gratitude for being alive, we elevate some of our happy hormones. We start to feel good, our serotonin starts to kick in. If we have a spouse bias and we give them a hug, our oxytocin starts to kick in. Now we're feeling happy, we're feeling positive. And then we do three simple things. M, B, I. Move for at least 20 minutes. Getting out into nature, whether it's just going for a bit of a walk into a jog, however we wanna play this game, the key is that we wanna be moving because not only does that get our endorphins and our dopamine up and our, all these happy hormones that make us feel great, but it's getting oxygen through the lungs. And I always believe my greatest ideas and my greatest productivity comes from all of this. You know, when you've got the oxygen through the lungs, all of a sudden that idea starts to spark. And you're like, yes, I'm going to do that. So we want to be doing that first thing in the morning. I'm not telling you to go and have a, a hit workout in the gym. You can if you want. But to be honest, if you do that at the moment you wake up, well, there's some stress starting to kick in again, right? We've got to ease into the day. We've got to ease into the day in the way that we need to take some time for us first to stretch it out, to get moving and to warm into it. And then B stands for breathe. 10 minutes of meditation or some form of mindfulness practice has been proven. And this is what I was going back to before. Eight weeks of it can shrink that amygdala. So now what happens? Let's say normally you walk down the street, you see a snake and you go, ah, fight or flight kicks in. Now you're trying to get out of it. You're kind of shaking a little bit, but you're going to make a decision. You're going to get out of there. Now, if you've been meditating for a long period of time with the shrinkage of the amygdala, what's, what they've found is basically you're going to see the snake but in the same amount of time that you're looking at the snake, you identify it's a stick and you don't respond. So you're much more chilled. The, what's happening uh, in front of you is not happening to you. You're not playing victim. You're playing, you know, you, you, you're, you're being more proactive, if you'd like. You're being more productive as a result of how you're responding to situations. And that's going to serve you so well in your home relationship, your family relationship, and all these other things as well. So this is really important. M and B, moving and breathing. And then we're setting our intentions. You can change your neurological pathways based on how you think. And if you can set intentions for the day as if they've already happened and putting an emotional attachment with that, you can make a profound impact in your life also. This is all about small changes that can make a massive result. Now, hey, listen, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed here because we've talked about a lot of things, remember that 1% improvement each day can make the world of difference. So focus on one thing I've mentioned today and apply that first. For me, it's always been the MBI component because that's what shifted the game. I went from feeling exhausted, tired, um, you know, not wanting to get out of bed to all of a sudden waking up with energy, wanting to take on the world. And I wasn't in any form of you know, adrenal burnout. I was just literally just getting into the day nicely and I was moving and I was making it all work collectively together, which is fantastic. So then when it comes to the intention, it would be at 6 a.m. saying something like, today, my intention was to contact five people uh, you know, for my business. I'm just giving you a really rough example, by the way. Um, 
And I have accomplished that and I feel fantastic. Again, putting the emotional attachment, making sure you've said it as if you've already done it. And what starts to happen is you start to reprogram your mind based on what's possible. And so MBI can be applied to anything and for anyone. And the result, just watch what happens after 30 days. I went to Johannesburg a couple of months ago and we were speaking and, you know, speaking in front of a few thousand people. We we're talking about all these business, different, you know, techniques and tools and systems. And the one thing that everyone gained more from than anything else was MBI. Because once you start to apply that, imagine your entire team started waking up as a high performer, not because they had to have a shift and change and had to start to view their, their own life as, as, a, as a different type of life, you know, and they've got to step into this high performance mentality when they don't even understand what that means. No, they simply just did MBI and they became a high performer. And that's what this is all about. In, in addition to MBI though, we can also apply three more hacks at the end that can change the game as well, which is GFC. So MBI, move, breathe, intentions, and GFC stands for G for gratitude, right? So we're, we're sitting down and we're being grateful for what we have. We look around, we acknowledge what we have. You will get what you want when you're grateful for what you have. I love sitting down in the morning with my son, he's three years old, and my partner Chantel, and the three of us hold hands and we say, what are you grateful for today? And he, you know, as three years old, he lights up, you can see the smile. And sometimes it might be some physical things like my bike and, you know, my cars and whatever else he's got. And other days it might be oh, the trees, the beautiful trees. He says, beautiful trees, those beautiful trees that are, those beautiful trees, look at them. Today, we were up at 4 a.m. looking at the sunrise. What was he grateful for today? The fact that he saw the sun wake up and they were, they were his words. So again, all of this kind of stuff is really important as a family. What you currently do from a relationship perspective at home is a direct consequence, or the direct consequence of that will be how you build relationships for your business as well. So I always believe this is your breeding ground for success. The space that you hold as a family, the connections that you have as well, which we'll get into in a moment. And after gratitude, then we can go into F for fast, which is an intermittent fast. So you could be fasting until lunchtime, for example, and that's up to you. You know, that's your journey. If you want to know more about fasting, I'm sure you've got plenty of resources within the, the brand there as well. And at the same time, um, C stands for connection. Now, this is what's really interesting. If you look at the longest study ever done on human longevity, which was out of Harvard University, where they took 720 men back in the 30s, and they identified that half that group was going to be you know, Harvard you know, scholars, and the other half were going to be from the, you know, the, the Boston sort of outskirts, the, the, the poor areas, if you'd like. And they looked every single year, they surveyed all these men that went through this whole journey. They identified, and that study, by the way, is still going today. I mean, it's been going 80 plus years. They still go back and they survey all these guys. The, the key that they identified as a result of this study was that it wasn't about just your nutrition that made you live longer. It was about meaningful interactions and connections. It was about ensuring that you had really solid relationships. That was the key to longevity. And that's your key to longevity alongside everything else that we've spoken about and what you're doing from a biohacking perspective. But here's the thing, as part of the exercise, so we've talked about GFC, gratitude, fasting, and C for connection, you wanna be reaching out to people you love and you care about. Hey, you might care about people on your team, love on your team, contact them, get in contact. This is like at the end of your two hour non-technology zone, right? This is like the final piece before you get into work for the day. But what we find is by doing that, number one, you've already felt great from everything you've been doing. So you're now going to transfer that positive energy to somebody else. And you're also going to still top up your batteries because it's going to be an interaction that's meaningful to you as well. You might be able to change that person's life from a simple conversation. If you haven't been speaking to your sister or your spouse or your, your parents because of something that's kind of petty and you know it's petty, make that an opportunity to be able to start reconnecting. It's so powerful when we start to do all of this. So I want to summarize right now this self-care zone. As I said, I didn't go into all the areas, but I wanted to focus on some of the key areas that can make a massive impact for your productivity right now whilst you're working from home and then into the future. And that is MBI, Move, Breathe, Intentions, and GFC, which is gratitude, fasting, and then also connecting with others uh, that you love and you care about. Now, beyond this, Beyond this first phase of the expansion zone, which was that self-care, we now go into the second phase, which is the connection piece. And I want to talk a little bit more about that today so that we're really aware of where this all kind of makes sense and how it all links together. This is kind of like synergistically working together. In an ideal world, you start at self-care, you go to connections, then you go to optimization. But we're in the real world. And the real world means that we're going to be working on all of this collectively over a period of time. And we're going to be working on the things that we identify that we need to do more than ever. 
Um, and so that's why, you know, the detoxification piece kicks in right now. People are struggling with their immune systems. Well, man, when did you last detoxify? People are struggling to make money. Well, man, when did you last detoxify? You get on top of that whole area, man, it's going to work great. But here's the thing. Now you've topped up your own batteries. The connection piece is broken into three areas. Love you to write this down. Number one, connection with self. The more you connect with self, the more you can develop your character, the more you align with your values, the more you understand your beliefs, the more under, you, 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 you understand how to step into your own truth and your own power. When was the last time you stood in front of a mirror, um, silent with yourself, and looked beyond the physical, and looked deep within, and acknowledged what you saw? If you haven't done it recently, I invite you to do it today. Because when you can start to identify the good, and the journey that you've been on, and the experiences that you've had, you very, very quickly realize that there is no other person like you. You are unique. You are special. You are loved. You are love. And when you have that as a foundation to give to others when it comes to the connection with others, you know, you're going to hold so much space for so many people and it's going to be so beautiful to see. But it starts with you first. The next piece is your connection with family. How often do you hold space for your family? Or are you someone that gets triggered based on what they talk about and what they discuss? You know, I used to be the triggered guy. Chantel would say something. Being Mr. Fix-It over here, I'd try to have a response or a solution to absolutely everything. Chantel would say something and I then would take it personally, even if she wasn't even talking about me. And that's how a lot of relationships are built, based on trauma that we've held onto at a cellular level, often that's been passed on either as kids or through generations before us. And we know epigenetically that that happens, right? We know that we can pass on trauma through lines of families. But the buck stops with us. And so the best possible thing we could be doing when it comes to our relationships is to remember the concept of space, to allow our loved ones, the ones that we care about most, to speak, to share. Even if we're involved in that conversation, we hear them. We're listening to them. We acknowledge them. And when we listen and when we acknowledge that's often all we need. And the final question I often ask Chantel after I've listened and acknowledged her is, what do you need from me in order to help you, you know, develop or grow from here? And that's such a beautiful conversation. That's such a conscious conversation. And that leads on to our relationships with our kids. Are we holding space or are we being reactive? Are we saying, don't do this? Are we saying, you know, go and do that? What I've learned, especially through this industry, is that if we say to our kids, don't do that, they're going to do it. And if we say, you know, the opposite, then they're going to do the opposite as well. And we wonder why when we go and try to sign somebody off up and we try to close the deal, we wonder why people push back and they say, no, thanks. Because we've basically led to them with the parent-child uh, type of psychology and it doesn't necessarily work. But if we hold space and we identify what people need and want, and I like what Linda said, be a good listener. Absolutely. We have two ears and one mouth. Let's listen twice as much as we speak. Then we're going to impact our relationships from a positive an angle as well. And the final piece is your tribe. We know you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Often you'll make within 10 to 15% of what your tribe makes in terms of income. Now, if you're striving, I'm just going to use a number. I know this number is way overused, right? But if you're a, a person that wants to make a million dollars, but you're hanging out with people that are making 50K, then there's a good chance that you'll conform to the 50K more so than going after the million. There's always an exception to the rule, but that's why it's so important to identify who you have in your corner. And your tribe is ever evolving, it's ever expansive, and it's always identifying people that align to your highest values, hence why you need to put the oxygen mask on you first. If you are clear on your values, then you are going to identify people that also have some form of common thread. The biggest issue I see in network marketing is people bring people into their businesses because they wanted a transaction and there was no common values. It's great at the start whilst there's energy. Six months later, now there's teams falling apart. And that often happens as a result of not knowing the value piece up front. Now, you guys have got a really amazing culture. But at the same time, remember, the more you work on this, the more you're going to safeguard your business as well moving forwards. Now, the same happens not just from a monetary standpoint, but also from a health standpoint. It also works from a, a, a relationship standpoint. However, these people, these five people show up in life, is going to be a real reflection of what you kind of have in front of you as well. So that's why you want to be upping your game consistently and looking at how you can add more value to people that are doing great and how they can add value to you. It's working both ways. The best way to build a business, in my opinion, is to go and meet new friends. 
rather than thinking of a transaction, we're constantly thinking of how can we connect with new people that align with me and light me up rather than suffocate me. That's a really important question to ask yourself as well. So now what we've done today is we've covered the self-care part of the expansion zone, the foundational principles, the things to do in order for you to show up with a routine that's going to serve you as a high performer. We've then gone into some conversation about relationships, very high level today, but it allows you to start to ask some questions. Again, awareness is key to transformational change. And the final piece of the expansion zone is your optimization. This is where we talk about purpose, passion, influence, impact, these kind of things. Now, I used to be someone that if, if, if someone joined a business of mine or someone you know, comes on as a contractor or, or an employee with what I do currently, the, the question I would have asked once, a, once upon a time is why did you get started? I wanted to know their why right up front. But here's the thing that I've learned, and this sometimes can come across a little bit controversial, but I like to share from my own personal perspective. And that is that when we ask people why they get started on the first day, the second day, the third or fourth day, and they haven't cleansed their body, gone into a form of mindfulness, haven't worked on themselves, they're going to give you an answer from their head, and they're going to give you an answer that you want to hear. However, when we start to dive into the self-care strategies, and we ask this question just a little bit later on, what happens is we realize that the why becomes much more heart-centered, much more aligned with that person as a whole, and it is really the driving factor towards them getting success in their lives. Very, very important. So what is purpose? Well, it's finding meaning in things that you love to do and, and, and things that you do. And rather than having one purpose or one why, remember that it's okay to have multiple. You know, we are multi-dimensional beings. I mentioned this at the very beginning. There are so many people out there with a linear focus. I'm going after the money. I'm going after the success at the jeopardy of everything else. However, if you can focus on this piece as, you know what? I'm also a musician and I love music. I'm going to do that too. I'm also a family member. I'm also going to give all my, my all. I've got reason to help these guys with something as well. And if you can continue to remember that the purpose conversation and finding meaning in, in what you do is always going to be expansive, then that allows you to live a very meaningful life. The other thing as well is that you don't need to wait to the summit, wait till you get to your top levels here to make all the passions that you have come true. I used to be the guy that said, I'll put the music on hold until I get to the top of the summit, but I never got to the summit. I'll tell you when I got to the summit was when I started doing music on a day-to-day -day basis. I give you permission right now to start doing what you love every single day. What is it that you love? Put it in the comments. What's something you know you have not been doing that you know you absolutely love that you would love to be doing more so as, as a result right now? Share it with us. Painting, yoga, guitar, hula hooping. This is fantastic, guys, already. These are the kinds of things that we need to be doing. We are creative beings. Um, dancing, music, art, golf, um, painting, dancing. Look at look, cycling, singing. Look at all of these coming through. This lights my heart up, and I really hope it lights yours as well. So rather than asking people what is their why, ask them what they're passionate about. How many of your team members right now that you're working with, do you know truly what they're passionate about? And are you holding them accountable to getting those things done on a day-to-day -day basis? Imagine you had a team that started by doing MBI every single day, GFC, and then they went in and did a little bit of painting for a couple of hours. They didn't worry about time because there's busyness and there's productivity and you could be productive in short amounts of time and get more results. That's what I learned the hard way. I used to work you know, 14 hours a day, 15 hours a day. Guys, I work four, five hours a day now. And the reason I do that is because the rest of the time is about purpose. It's about passion. I give you the permission right now to enjoy the journey if you're not already. Singing, cooking, and eating. <laughs> I love it. This is fantastic. Mountain climbing. Anyone that plays a bit of music, hey, hit me up. Let's have a jam online. I think we, could, we should do it, right? Uh, this would be fantastic. So you guys, you can hear this. This is all stuff that is all very, very feel-good stuff. The final thing here is that the more you focus on all these pieces that we've mentioned today, the more impact you can make, simple as that. Imagine being able to show up by simply being authentically, congruently you, not having to push any energy out, not having to force anything from simply just having serious fun. Like I feel right now, I feel serious joy. You know, be playful, have joy, live with joy, find ways. If you're not doing that on a day-to-day -day basis, find ways to make that happen. Because when it comes to the impact and the influence, when it comes to standing, whether it's on stage or on a call like this, whether it's picking up the phone and speaking to someone, uh, whether it's about your business or just about life in general, the reality is the more you vibe, the more you are going to attract not only the right tribe, but you're also going to keep the whole world 
alive. So on that note, I really hope that we've been able to you know, give you some value today and some fun also to start to reflect back on some of the key things that you are looking at in your life. Um, and, but also, you know, collectively work together on this. Have a conversation as a team. Have a conversation collectively together about what you can do to hold each other accountable to all those kind of things. The results will come. Trust me, they will come. Be patient. I didn't get any results for five years, five years. And I kept going because I was reminded to never, ever allow my greatest challenge to be greater than my dreams. Guys, I really appreciate your time. If there's anything that you guys have taken out of today that you really feel resonated with you, I just want to let you know there's a couple of things that we're doing on this side that might only enhance this conversation further. And the first thing is that and I'm really excited about this because we've been shut down the last few months, but we run these luxury retreats up here in Noosa, Australia, um, four days, three nights. We do it uh, three, four times a year and they always sell out. Um, but I'm excited if anyone's in Queensland, we don't know what's happening with the borders right now. So if anyone's in Queensland for July, we have a couple of spaces remaining. So if you want to come and join us at the Reignite Retreat, four days, three nights, you're going to eat well, you're going to sleep well, you're going to have a huge amount of fun, you're going to learn a huge amount of stuff, you're going to do meditation, yoga, sound healing, might do some breath work as well, we're going to do some really cool things, then you can just go to reignite, R-E-I-G-N-I-T-E, -E, retreat, R-E-T-R-E-A-T, -E -E retreat, I think I spelled that right, you know how to spell retreat, right, Re reigniteretreat.com, um, and that will allow you to take a look. Now, if you're outside of Queensland, we've got October, we've also got March next year available, so feel free to jump on and come and join us. We would really love to have you with us. And the final piece is that if, um, if you can't get to a retreat and you want to play with us online, you can go to reignitelife.com. Go and test all of our stuff out on there for 14 days for free. No questions asked. There's about 30 or 40 hours of content on there as well. But I don't want to take any more of your time. I really appreciate all of you so much. As I said, I've had a lot to do with you over the last 12 months in different teams. And I really continue. I really look forward to continuing a really fruitful relationship with all of you. So Thanks so much. And uh, back over to you, Pam. James, thank you so much. I've got like swarms of notes here. Um, I just wanted to just recap a couple of really some of the important things that you said. Um, never allow your challenges to be greater than your vision. I, um, I think that's really important and timely for our field. Uh, I, I believe this happens a lot. Um, you know, especially in our industry, a challenge comes along and we lose sight of the vision of where, you know, where we've planned our roadmap to, to go. So I think um, just having that in the back of our minds is so important. Um, and your MBI, moving for 20 minutes, having gratitude when you wake up, breathing, meditation, breathing through your nose. I've been doing a lot of training on that. I don't know if anyone else is that I'm very conscious that I breathe through my mouth a lot, which is um, stress related. So really just taking the time and it's quite challenging when you're aware of it to breathe through your nose. Um, and mindful practice. There's so much stuff on YouTube. I mean, you know, every morning I know, James, you probably have some great things. I often just choose a, a morning motivation or a morning meditation because I like to mix it up and it's such a beautiful way to start the day. And then letting you setting your intentions for the day is so important. Letting um, being able to shape the day for yourself, not having the day shape you, you know, like so many people wake up and think, right, well, where's the day going to take me? How about thinking this is where the day will take me and seeing it as you want it to be, which I think is so important. The GFC, the gratitude, fasting connection. The great thing for all of us here um, in our biohacking community is we have the NAD product launching on, uh, what is it, when, uh, Tuesday the 9th of June in New Zealand, which actually raises our sirtuin levels, um, which um, through the Anti-Aging Institute in, in the States has been proven to be the equivalent of fasting. So we have NAD um, coming soon, which is going to really help us with, um, with longevity. And then, of amazing. course, the connection. Sorry, James, did you want to I, jump in? I was, I was going to say, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Very, very yeah, good. yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be. Um, we need to get you some NAD, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, I love what you said like a purpose, finding meaning in the things we do. And, and, and you know, what are you passionate about outside of Life Vantage? I know many of us, we can get so, so, you know, like laser focused that we forget about the other parts of our life and we forget to also bring joy into what we do and fun into what we do because sometimes it all gets too serious. I think that's been. 
a lot of what's been happening the past couple of months. So I know for our team, we've been doing more of let's bring the joy and the fun into what we do. Uh, because everyone seems to be more successful when we're enjoying what we do. So look, that's just a few of the things that I've taken away from today, James. Thank you so much. Super excited about your reignite retreats. I think um, there's a lot of us here that are going to be really interested to get up and be with you on the sunny coast to do that. Also, your um, your website. I think we've popped it up on the chat space. Um, we'll throw it up if one of the girls could throw it up again. Thank you so much for being with us, James. Um, so much. We just need you to come back and share more because we love. Uh, it's an absolute you. pleasure, fam. No, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. And, and also on the online site, there's about 30 hand-selected meditations on there as well, if anyone needs them. So uh, as I said, it's all free for the first 14 days. So thanks. I really appreciate it. Thanks, James. Till next time. Thank Sounds you so great. much. Enjoy. Thank you. Okay. So now um, we move across to um, a delightful woman named Tiffany Matthews. And Tiffany is quite new with Life Vantage. She's already become a pro four within a few months. Tiff's a mum of three and she lives in Toronga. Um, she'll probably correct me on that <laughs> the enunciation. And, um, you know, we're just really excited, Tiffany, to learn a little bit more about you and, you know, see what you're up to and where you're going. So welcome, Tiffany. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pam. Uh, you, you had it pretty close. It's Tauranga in New Zealand, so it takes some practice to, to get that right. Um, but thank you so much for inviting me online to the call today to share a little bit about my, my story and my background with you. And thank you also, James. I also have tons of notes from your... Um, from your session today, I am really excited to go and action a lot of that, particularly adding in some more um, singing and dancing into my life. That's something that brings me a lot of joy. So um, I guess, you know, uh, Pam has asked me to, to share my story with you. And um, if I can take start, I guess, by taking you back to about seven years ago, uh, that's when my story began. And at the time I was living up in Auckland in New Zealand and I was married to my wonderful husband. And I was working as a high school English and history teacher. So that's what I'd done for a number of years. Um, I'd made my way up through the ranks of teaching, I guess. I was uh, a, a dean. And um, so, you know, we were, we were comfortable with what we were doing. And then we started the discussions about around what our future was going to look like. Were we going to have children? And, um, you know, how would we do that? And I uh, had always felt like I was going to have children. So, of course, I said, yes, we're going to have kids. And for the very first time, we sat down and we talked about all of the things that we really wanted in our life together and in our future. Um, it wasn't anything outrageous. It was the things that most of us want. You know, we wanted to own our own home and uh, be able to travel a lot. We wanted to um, have me at home primarily with our children. And so when we looked at those things that we really wanted, and then we looked at the paths that we were on, me as a teacher and my husband worked as a graphic designer, he had his own business. Um, it was so obvious to us that we couldn't have that lifestyle if we continued on the path that we were going down. We needed a few more pieces of the puzzle to be in place for that to happen. Um, and I started to look around at people in my profession who had been in my career, you know, 10 years plus, they'd made their way up to senior leadership, Many of them couldn't take off time to be with their children when they were sick. Um, you know, that formula for success that we're all raised to believe works, that you just go to school and get good grades and go to uni, get a degree, and then you'll just have this life that you want. Um, that formula wasn't working for most of the people that we knew. And so I started to get a little bit um, itchy in my job. I was really resentful about having to be somewhere. And I desperately wanted this, this freedom in my life. I wanted to control my own time. And um, I started to get those Sunday night blues. I'm sure <laughs> a lot of people who are working in jobs that they don't particularly love know what I'm talking about. Um, but I would, you know, on Sunday night, I would get really depressed. And sometimes I would cry just thinking about having to go back into my job for the week. I visualized it like this treadmill that I got on on a Monday morning and I couldn't get off until Friday afternoon. And just the thought of having to do that year after year after year, uh, finally making my way up the ladder to earn my 70K income, teacher's income is capped, you know, that didn't look appealing to me anymore. And at the same time, I had a lot of friends who had had children before us and they were at home with their kids full time and they were really struggling on one income. So um, 
I knew that I didn't want that either. I knew there had to be a way for me to be at home, start a family. I just didn't know how to have that. And um, so thankfully, you know, somebody introduced me to network marketing, somebody I didn't even know. And um, I had a look at some information. We sort of jumped in without really knowing what we were doing. And it is definitely the best decision I think that we've made for our family. Uh, we've been, you know, here we are seven years on. I've now got three children. So they're six, three, and one. Uh, it's been a real blessing to be home with them, you know, and, and go on all the school trips and be there for kindy without... Um, having to sacrifice the parts of our lifestyle that are important to us. And I know that, you know, not everybody can do that. And so I do see that as a gift. Um, and while the income is great in network marketing, you know, the other thing that I love about this industry, and we've just heard, you know, 45 minutes of it, is the, the personal development that we get in this industry. Um, because I am not the same person today that I was seven years ago. Um, I used to take a lot of things very personally. James just said that. I complained a lot. Um, every day, in fact, after work, I would come home and complain to my poor husband. I had a lot of stories going around my head. You know, someone wouldn't answer the phone, for example, and I'd make up a big story about how they were ignoring me and avoiding my call and didn't like me anymore. <laughs> um, I had a lot of stories about why my life wasn't working the way that I wanted it to work. I blamed a lot of people. And so my personal development journey took years. Um, I'm still on that journey. Uh, but if you saw me in my first year of network marketing, my learning curve was massive because in my 28 years of life, I had never been taught that I could change my life, that it was up to me. And so that's why I'll always be thankful to network marketing because within this business model, um, I was handed personal development. And we all think that this is normal because this is you know, what we do in this industry. We jump on calls like this at lunchtime on a Wednesday, uh, but it's not. People out there in the world are not seeing the world, you know, not seeing the stuff that we're seeing. So I do love that as well about, you know, about uh, network marketing that I'm now surrounded by a group of people who are willing to work on themselves in the same way that I work on myself, right? The friendships that I have outside of network marketing can be a little bit surface level. Um, you know, but people in this industry really get it. We get what it takes. That sometimes we have to do things that are outside of our comfort zone. We are all willing to look at ourselves in the mirror every day and call ourselves out on the bullcrap because um, that's what it takes. And not everybody is willing to do that. So anyway, fast forward to last November. Um, I was approached by uh, Charlotte in November and I thought about Life Vantage for a couple of months. Uh, there were a few things that I really liked about this business. I loved the look of the compensation plan uh, that you could get paid straight away for the work that you do. That just makes sense, right? Um, I love the sound of the products, that it was cutting edge science, it was where nutritional medicine was going. Um, that excited me. I wanted to be a part of that. I really liked that the products uh, and the product range was simple and it was unique. So I kind of tested it out on a few friends and, you know, people were interested in what biohacking was. It was a really good conversation starter. So um, on paper, everything sounded really good. But what got me over the line was when I came to your uh, the celebration, I'm not sure what it's called, Leadership Academy, I think um, in January in the Gold Coast. And oh my goodness, uh, I got home from that. And my husband, you know, the very first thing we said when we got home was, um, I feel like I've just come home from school camp where you miss all of your friends and you just want to go back to camp again and hang out together all the time because it wasn't anything in particular that someone said over the weekend. It was just the feeling that I got from the people in, your, in this company. Um, we listened to Courtland, you know, all of corporate spoke. We listened to Courtland and Darren and Pam and Claire and everybody uh, just felt so genuine. Um, I remember Courtland talked about making it to the top and what it takes, you know, to be kind and that as you make your way to the top, don't forget to take the right things with you. I really loved that message. I felt he was so genuine in the things that he was sharing. Um, the other thing we really picked up was the energy of all the distributors. Uh, you walked into that room and there was this electric feeling of excitement. People uh, obviously were in momentum and they were growing their businesses. And that was really attractive to me because um, for a long time, I'd felt like my business was quite stagnant and I wanted to be a part of that energy. Um, I was also really touched by the amount of support that there was in this company, that people were reaching out to others, regardless of whose team they were in, right? There was a lot of cross-line support going on, uh, very little ego there. Um, and I really wasn't expecting to 
find a connection or some friendship very quickly uh, in this business, but I did. And so, of course, I said yes, and um, I started to, to, to grow my business in February. So, um, yeah, it's only been a few months. It's been really fast and furious since then. And it has been interesting uh, starting a, a new business during a pandemic when we've uh, been in lockdown in New Zealand for nine weeks. So that's going to be a good story to tell at some point. But, um, you know, I think what I've loved so far in my life vantage journey is just a couple of things. Um, I really feel a lot of posture around this this business and with this company. Um, Partly because the customers who I are using the products, they're noticing a difference straight away. So that gave me huge belief in the products that they work. The other thing is I get paid straight away for the work that I'm doing. And I can't tell you how much posture that has given me. So that when I go out there now and I'm talking to people about this, uh, this business and saying, hey, this is a great way for you to make some extra money. Um, I have posture around that because I know it's true. And I can come from that place of, of real service and help. Um, the second thing is that I just bounce back quicker. You know, when someone says no, I'm not going to take that personally anymore. I really understand now that um, my business isn't dependent on one person. I don't need anybody to help me grow this business. Um, I'm offering something to them. And if they say no, that's sweet as. Who's next? Um, so I get through that process of feeling disappointed. I bounce back a lot quicker. Um, and of course, I'm growing a great team, like nobody makes it to the top or helps to grow their business on their own, right? We need people around us. So I'm just really blessed to have found some amazing uh, women and a few men uh, to work with who are all on this journey with me. And they are all just so talented and amazing. And I can't wait to, to watch their growth and see them on calls like this uh, in the near future. So yeah, that's that's me. That's my story. My, my goal is to go Pro 5 by July of this year. And then I've got some team members who I'm going to help to get to Pro 5 so that we can all be on the Pro 5 Summit next year, which is really exciting. So thank you again for inviting me on, Pam and Claire. Um, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, what an incredible story. And, and you've only been with us such a short time. Um, it's so lovely to hear that you got so much out of our Leader Academy because um, we just love that event so much. And um, I think the thing I love about it the most is that we, we seem to be able to keep the energy level through two full days, cocktail evenings, uh, you know, the energy level of the room. Um, and I think you're right, it's like the camp. Everyone's just super excited to be together. And, um, and, and, and we wanna keep that precious as we continue to grow, that we, you know, protect our culture and our sense of uh, community. So, um, so you said what your goals are already. Um, where do you see your life managed journey going? Do you know, like, where where do you see it going? Are you planning to take it all the way to Master Pro Ten or? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. This is it. Like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> all in. Fantastic. Um, and congratulations on everything that you're doing to grow, especially the New Zealand market. And we're so excited that we have a new product coming. Um, which is so in alignment with what James Yates was just talking about, um, you know, in, you know, what people do with fasting that we can do with that NAD, pro tandem NAD, that we can raise our sirtuin levels, um, which is a really big deal. So um, we'll just continue to work together. We're here to support you on your journey. And just, um, we're just thrilled to have um, people like you of such high caliber uh, partnering with our company. I think you said it right when it's like, we're just not looking for anybody to join our business opportunity. We want everyone to take our products for the business opportunity. We want the right people that um, are definitely in alignment with our culture um, and we protect that very fiercely. So can't wait to see where you're going next and get over there and, and celebrate with you in New Zealand. So congratulations, Tiff, and thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, no worries, thank you. So that wraps us up for another week of our South Pacific um, success training. Thank you all for being here. We've had really great attendance today. Please check out James Yates online, um, reigniteyourlife.com. And um, next week, we've got some really exciting speakers. So watch this space. We'll be announcing them soon. Thank you all for joining and have a really great day. Till next time.